Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back. In the last class, we were mainly focusing on the Monsanto acetic acid process of the carbonylation, and then uh, we have seen the hydroformylation reaction. Now, in the two days class, we will just briefly discuss one of the asymmetric uh, equivalent asymmetric case of the hydroformylation reaction, and then we will try to discuss the hydrocarboxylation, and if time permits, we will discuss the hydrocyanation reaction. Hydrocyanation reaction, uh, as uh, you know, by default, it's not really carbonylation reaction, but uh, you know, uh, hydrocyanation is similar to that of the carbonylation mechanism. So we may, may want to put that in the similar bracket. Okay. So um, today, again, uh, we will we'll mainly focus on one of that one of the asymmetric case, and then hydrocarboxylation asymmetric asymmetric hydroformylation is the one we will discuss in the beginning. Okay. Asymmetric hydroformylation reaction are very very important reaction, and again, uh, this these are the reaction industrially done in uh, in a huge scale. Asymmetric hydroformylation reaction. One of the component could be, of course, if it is a linear product, as you know, as you have seen in the last class, there is no chance of getting any asymmetric one, right? Uh, especially if it is a terminal olefin and linear one, we are not going to get it. Uh, but if it is a styrene one or 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 a branch product formation is happening, then we we can have uh, this ligand which is chiral, and then we we can have an opportunity to get uh, get get the product in asymmetric fashion. Let's say for this case with a suitable ligand, this gives the branch product and. Uh, and E E is greater than uh, greater than ninety four percent, and that means that of course eighty eight is to twelve ratio of uh, of uh, of of the um, of of this uh, this product, right? Eighty eight is to twelve ratio for this linear is to branch product. Okay. Now <coughs> for for this particular case, that is very good, and we have ninety four percent E E for this reaction, and we of course. Have the linear product a little bit. So from from this uh, styrene equivalent, we have two product formation, and that is the linear uh, product that is uh, pH CH two CH two CHO and the branch product. And if we are having a suitable ligand which is asymmetric in nature, which has a suitable chirality, we will be able to get the branch product in enantiomeric excess. Um, that means in asymmetric version, and we we are we are going to get uh, for this particular case. Let's say we get a more than 90 percent EE, that which is considered to be very good, and uh, ni nearly 95 percent EE. That's considered to be, that's really very good. And then of course we we have a linear is to branch product formation 12 is to 88 ratio. That is again quite a, quite a good achievement. But one must notice why. This uh, branch product is all of a sudden is the major product. Why not the linear product is a major product? That's what we need to understand. Uh, one must understand that this is styrene. This is not propene or other aliphatic olefin, and um, therefore the answer lies within the nature of the olefin. Let me uh, let me draw the metal alkyl species. So for uh, the metal alkyl species, if it is a uh, aliphatic one, this is the one which is going to be the more stable. And the primary one and the secondary one is the one which will give you the branch product. Okay, it's going to be less stable. That's why for um, propene, for example, the one which we were discussing in the last class, this linear product is uh, is the major one. The branch product is the minor one. But for styrene, what is happening that this is the metal alkyl, this is the least favored and uh, and this branched one or the secondary secondary alkyl species is more stable because of the um, charge distribution or or the or the stability of of the intermediate due to the resonance resonance with, with the phenyl ring. Okay, negative charge is stabilized by 
phenyl ring and that is how we, we have seen that this product formation is going on. Indeed, this is how um, the naproxen which is the NSAID uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug which is used for pain and uh, fe uh, pain, fever, uh, inflammation uh, and stiffness or also for kidney stone that naproxen which is actually a very well, uh, well sold drug and it is synthesized by BINAP or tolyl BINAP, uh, BINAP or tolyl BINAP and uh, this naproxen is synthesized in asymmetric fashion by utilizing this technique. Okay. So, what we would like to take uh, the message is very simply the asymmetric version of hydroformylation reactions are widely used in the industry. Specifically, a lot of drug molecules can be synthesized. One of the most important example as we tried to say is the naproxen synthesis which has the uh, which has the naphthalene unit instead of the benzene ring. This is synthesized in large scale with a BINAP or tolyl BINAP as the ligand in industrial scale. And uh, we, 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 we know that this naproxen is a, one of the best selling perhaps drug in the, in the world and uh, it is used for, uh, it, it is actually in, in said so um, that means non-steroidal anti-inflammatory uh, drug and uh, it is used quite large scale all over the world, okay. So all these reactions, simple reactions but can be utilized for humankind for industrial scale and uh, therefore uh, we, we do want to understand the mechanism of it and we have just seen that these mechanisms are very very simple and that is consisting of the fundamental steps that we have discussed uh, so far in the class. In the next part we would like to discuss the hydrocarboxylation reaction, the mechanism and uh, as you will see this is again one of the simplest uh, reaction and quite useful in industrial setup. Let us try to look back at that. Hydrocarboxylation reactions. Okay. Now, for this reaction, we again have an olefin, carbon monoxide, and alcohol. Okay, we have the um, we have the, the same catalyst, cobalt catalyst, etcetera, carbonyl, and we have the product formation where this is the RO equivalent, this is the RO, and then we have the CO, that is the CO, okay, and then our uh, our olefin equivalent with two of the hydro, uh, with the hydride in there, right? So we have RO. Okay, from this alcohol, we have carbon monoxide from here, and we have our olefin equivalent from there. Okay, and now of course uh, this reaction is going to be uh, similar as you can perhaps now um, draw the mechanism of it. Okay, I expect perhaps you should be able to do by now. Um, it's a stepwise mechanism. If you try to draw, I think there's a good chance that you will be correct in predicting the mechanism. Let's anyway. Let's try to try to draw the mechanism over here, and uh, that will be the kind of uh, the final um, final mechanism for this course. And uh, of course, uh, perhaps we will not be able to discuss too much on the hydrocyanation reaction. The mechanism will be exactly similar to what we have seen so far. Let's try to focus on the hydrocarboxylation reactions. So we start with uh, start with this uh, CO CO3 equivalent. Of course, one of the CO unit will be lost. That's the first step, as you have seen in the last case. And starting from there, olefin will coordinate, and therefore you will have olefin coordinated uh, cobalt intermediate. From there on, a beta migratory insertion will occur, and the carbon monoxide will also come in. We are kind of uh, brushing in a little bit and therefore we, we have beta after beta migratory insertion of this hydride into the olefin you, you get the alkyl metal alkyl species and of, of course also carbon monoxide get in so um, 3 carbonyl become 4 carbonyl from there on alpha migratory insertion occurs to give you the intermediate where one of these uh, 4 carbonyl gets into the or uh, alkyl group migrates into one of these four carbonyl unit and then you get this equivalent which is ready for
for now uh, the alcohol to give you the product ok. So, you show alcohol comes in and you get this product formation. So, this is the product right. Um, so, again once again this is very very simple uh, the mechanism wise I guess um, you know the simplest hopefully by now to you. Uh, we have seen the metal carbonyl species hydrido metal carbonyl species losing one of the carbonyl first interacting with the olefin and therefore, a beta migratory insertion and CO coordination gives you the metal alkyl intermediate from there on alpha migratory insertion this is, these steps are going to be repeated right exactly same thing we have seen before the same thing is following but only thing in the last step for the hydroformylation you have seen the hydrogen gas coming into the picture we have discussed that it is not perhaps not the oxidative addition of the hydrogen gas most likely it is a sigma bond metathesis in this case alcohol comes into the picture and then from that uh, acyl intermediate we have alkyl carbonyl intermediate we have attack by the alcohol to give you the product ok. We will look at that last step once again just like the hydroformylation case we have looked at the hydrogen gas addition to the metal metal uh, car alkyl carbonyl intermediate here also we will we'll look at that alcohol intermediate how this RAOH is attacking on, on the on the metal carbonyl intermediate ok alkyl carbonyl intermediate which is bound with the metal ok. Let us try to look at that So the mechanism 1 first mechanism for that step we need to draw the last step or last um, molecule what we were discussing. So, this is the trace carbonyl cobalt intermediate with COR equivalent is there if you have alcohol <coughs> of course, alcohol can directly attack at this carbonyl center gives rise to the intermediate where hydroxo from this one will be coming and OR it is a tetrahedral intermediate <coughs> and from there on you have uh, beta hydride elimination this is alpha this is beta <coughs> alpha beta beta hydride elimination. Um, so, beta hydride elimination can give you H CO CO 3 equivalent along with the coordination of this CO R O R equivalent right CO R O R equivalent from there you will get your product formation that you are looking for O R and R right the release of this. So, what you have seen so far is the alcohol is attacking at this carbonyl center giving rise to the uh, tetrahedral intermediate where you have uh, alpha beta position hydride this beta hydride elimination can give you give you the product formation along with the cobalt hydrido intermediate back to the uh, to, to the method. Another mechanism would be mechanism 2 second mechanism where you will will generate upon attack by this equivalent uh, by this alcohol you will you will you will generate just like SN2 reaction you will gen generate ROH plus and OR and and this CO minus will be generated right. So, OR and uh, this is a uh, this is a uh, this carbon ionic intermediate will be generated and from there once again you will get get the get the equivalent of uh, of this product formation where cobalt and the pro corresponding product is getting generated. So, these are the two step of course, another could be another could be mechanism there could be another mechanism where the methanol uh, methanol uh, me mechanism 3 where this al alcohol will coordinate with the metal center RO ROH will bind bind to the metal center and give you uh, give you the corresponding product formation. So, in the last step what we have seen so far of this hydrocarboxylation reaction there are three different possibilities one as the last one the third mechanism could be ROH is binding with the metal center and then therefore, attacking to the this alkyl carbonyl equivalent that is the third mechanism. The first mechanism we have seen that um, ROH is attacking on the carbonyl center and giving rise to the tetrahedral intermediate from where beta hydride elimination is occurring to give you the product formation. The second mechanism which is uh, basically direct attack and uh, you know um, in a concerted mechanism where you attack and release the 
release the um, release the uh, uh, metal equivalent from from the intermediate right so all these three mechanisms are possible it is uh, you know it is still under debate which was exactly which is the one that is exactly going on in in these cases okay so for the hydrocarboxylation reaction we have seen the a similar mechanism to to that of the hydroformylation reaction of course both the hydroformylation and hydrocarboxylation reaction we have seen that there is some ambiguity in the last step which is of course one of the most crucial step we have discussed about the hydroformylation in the last class in this class we have seen the hydrocarboxylation reaction and plausible three mechanisms are there of course still it is kind of wide open which mechanism is predominant or which mechanism occurs in these cases now of course as you can understand the, there would be an opportunity to do the uh, do the hydrocarboxylation reaction in an asymmetric fashion similar to that hydroformylation reaction if you have styrene or let's say vinyl naphthalene or other aryl group as the uh, as the uh, part of the olefin um, olefin or the you know vinyl benzene or vinyl aryl molecule if you are having then once again similar to your hydroformylation reaction you will get the branch product formation and if you have the suitable ligand for the metal center uh, you can induce uh, chirality into the molecule so asymmetric version of this reaction can be developed by sh having suitable ligand okay um, with, uh, for the interest of time we will briefly discuss again uh, the the hydrocyanation reaction i think we can discuss for next uh, 5 10 minutes or so so the last topic of this course is the hydrocyanation reaction now hydrocyanation reactions are the one where we will see into the olefin molecule we will in introduce a hydride and the cyanide now this of course this is not under the traditional banner of the carbonylation reaction but the mechanism uh, is going to be similar to that of those carbonylation reaction that we have seen and therefore we would like to discuss this and uh, that will be the final topic of this course hydrocyanation reaction similar to the hydroformylation reaction you can have the linear version or the branch version linear product will be predominant as you have seen for the aliphatic cases if it is styrenyl cases then you will have the branch product once you have the branch product as the major product you may need or you may want to get the asymmetric version of this reaction and that is controlled by the chiral ligand for the metal center we will we will see these are hydrocyanation reaction particularly for one one of the cases that we will we will discuss over here okay for hydrocyanation reaction the general reaction um, type is the one over here as you can see if you have let's say if this is the this is let's say naphthyl one naphthyl one or styrenyl one um, we will get get the nickel as the starting material in this case and we, we can have the cord as you know cyclooctadiene can can react with nickel uh, with with this uh, nickel cord can react with the olefin to give you the corresponding r uh, cyano in this case asymmetric version we are talking about and uh, this methyl and this where when r r can be of styrenyl again naphthenyl or naphthyl or styrenyl we can get a good ee for for this reaction it's a chiral bidentate ligand we can use for example for this reaction so the mechanism for this reaction will be as you are trying to say will be very similar to that of the reactions we have seen so far let's discuss the mechanism so nickel will coordinate with the phosphine okay bidentate uh, chiral uh, phosphine ligand let's say in this case uh, for asymmetric version and uh, olefin will come and interact with the nickel center to give you nickel olefin intermediate with the phosphine coordination so of course in order to generate this you will have to lose the cord cyclooctadiene those are not that of a good ligand compared to the bidentate phosphine ligand therefore the ligand displacement will will occur to give you the so called putative uh, reactive intermediate and then therefore uh, we will interact further with the hydrocyan cyan, uh, hydrocyanic acid hcn and uh, to give to give the nickel hydride 
and cyano equivalent along with the olefin coordination with it and then of course, the phosphine is coordinated. So, what you have seen is the um, first of all of course, ligand dissociation and phosphine coordination, uh, cord dissociation and phosphine coordination, olefin interaction, so ligand association, exogenous ligand association, then HCN oxidative addition into the HCN to give you this uh, this intermediate which, which is penta coordinated nickel intermediate. From here on as you can see the hydride is there, olefin is there, of course, uh, you can predict by now beta migratory insertion would be going on at this step. So, beta migratory insertion will give rise to your um, the alkyl intermediate is the secondary alkyl because the R group is uh, styrenyl in nature or naphthyl and therefore, the, uh, the negative charge over there can be stabilized that is why we do not get the, the linear one, the branch one we are getting particularly in this case. From there on reductive elimination will predominate or will pick up to give you the desired product of the uh, hydrocyanation reaction. Okay. This hydrocyanation reaction, this hydride and the cyano is coming from here and that is where we are talking about that this is a hydrocyanation reaction. Of course, um, hydrocyanation in industrial scale we have we, we can also use. These are the industrial scale reaction sometimes utilized for the for the nylon preparation actually. Um, so, for example, butadiene can be reacted with hydrocyano uh, HCN and to give you the adiponitrile dicyano intermediate. So, two olefin, uh, two olefin attached with each other, 1,3-diene or butadiene. Now, this butadiene can be converted by this hydrocyanation reaction to give you adiponitrile and then that adiponitrile can be reduced to give you the diamine diamine 1 to diamino butane basically and that 1 to diamino butane can be reacted with the uh, dicarboxylic acid to give you the nylon. So, nylon 6 6 polymer amide can be synthesized by, by this process. So, hydrocyano reaction as you may know is widely uh, used in the industry, industry specifically let us say for nylon synthesis it is, uh, it is quite popular. Uh, you can look it up, uh, this, is, this is a very simple reaction where butadiene is reacting with HCN to give you the dicyanobutane and from there the reduction of this will give you the, the, the 6 carbon containing amine and that amine can be reacted with the dicarboxylic acid to give you the, give, give you the polymer uh, that is the polymer amide also known as nylon 6 6. That is industrial use in, uh, in a huge scale and as, as you know these hydrocyano reactions uh, are uh, are uh, are little bit tricky to deal with. One must take care must be taken before handling because you are going to deal with the HCN. So industry has to be uh, extremely careful to utilize. So 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 to speak. Also the carbonylation reaction uh, need to be dealt with very carefully and uh, proper proper safety precaution must be taken before doing this reaction. So, what we have seen for the carbonylation and this hydrocyanation reaction are the reaction mechanisms are very, very simple. It is the ligand dissociation, ligand association and then, uh, then you know either your beta, uh, then your uh, oxidative addition, uh, the migratory, beta migratory insertion and some, some cases then followed by the alpha migratory insertion and then reductive elimination or oxidative addition again for the hydrogen and so on as you have seen. The, but the fundamental steps remain exactly same or similar either you know the sequence can change, but essentially you get the product formation very efficiently. Once again um, this is the last class I expect that you have understood uh, the basics of organometallic chemistry and uh, those specifically those reactions you can study from any book some of the some of these of course the ideas or uh, some of the course organization. I, uh, of course, there, there was influence from my various teachers, but I hope I, I was able to give you an idea that these reactions uh, are very, very efficient and can be utilized even in industrial scale. Of course, I, I thank all my teachers with, with whom I have the opportunity to interact and they have influenced me greatly in teaching this course and organizing this course. Uh, I hope you, you have taken some message and you will be able to utilize these uh, in your uh, in your research or for further study. With that hope, I would uh, I would like to conclude uh, this this course brief course and would like to uh, welcome uh, for the future courses that I will be having 
uh, on the ergonometric and uh, other related related topics thank you very much for your kind attention and please keep studying ergonometric chemistry Vayam Prabha, Digital India, Educated India.